G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing this off-season series where I go through each of the clubs in the AFL and I try and project what their best 22 or 24 or so will look like three years from now, with the rough date being uh, round one of 2027. So uh, what is the point of doing this? Well, it kind of helps us map out what, uh, what, might, what might be the medium-term future for clubs based on their current list breakdown. So, um, you know, the first thing we do is eliminate which players are likely to have retired we try and project which of their young guns will have forced their way into the best 22. And then we look at what are the strengths and weaknesses of that 24 or 22 or so. So today we're doing the Essendon Football Club. If you want to find the other clubs that I've done in this series, there is a playlist on this channel called uh, AFL Teams Three Years From Now. We can find everything from the Western Bulldogs all the way up to Essendon today. And then I've got four clubs left, Collingwood, Carlton, Brisbane and Adelaide left to do before the end of this series. So if you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, and this sounds like the sort of content that you would enjoy, I'd really appreciate it if you considered subscribing to this channel to help it grow. Now, like I said, it's time to get stuck into the Essendon Football Club. Um, again, if you're an Essendon fan and you're new to the channel, I have done a Best 22 breakdown for 2024 as well. That is also available on this channel. There is another playlist called Team Based Videos for 2024 where you can go find the Essendon one as well. And I'll probably put a little uh, link to it up the top left corner, top right corner. I think it's that way. I always forget. Uh, but I'll put a little link if you want to find that video as well. But let's talk about Essendon. And the first thing we always do before kicking off this analysis is working through which players are almost certainly going to be retired or off the list in three years' time. Not so much the Delistees, but uh, players that are almost certainly going to be retired or too old to be kept around. So uh, we'll start off with Todd Goldstein. That's an easy one. That's 38. I really doubt he will uh, still be plugging away. Dyson Heppel at 34. Dylan Shield will also be 34. These ages are by round one of the 2027 season. Jake Stringer will be 32, nearly turning 33. Slight chance he's still around, but... Uh, for the purposes of projecting, you know, what's coming up behind, I've, I've uh, booted him for now, respectfully. Nick Hind at 32 and Jake Kelly at 32. Again, I think those both both of those players turned 33 that season, so uh, I've shuffed them out. Then it's time to talk about the players that will be 30 or above that I've kept on the list for the purposes of this video. Uh, there's only three for Essendon, so there's not too much of an aging list there. Uh, but Zach Merritt will be 31. I'd imagine he'd still be a good player at 31. Jaden Laverde as well will be 30, nearly 31, but still 30. And Kyle Langford equally will be 30. So just three players over 30 in three years' time, which is interesting. So with all that being said, let's have a look at this best 24. And I say it's interesting that there's not that many players over 30 because there are a lot of players in their prime at Essendon, uh, but none of them are actually old, if that makes sense. The start of their prime. And th that was the theme of the last video I did for the Bombers. feels like there's, there's a sense that they're... The improvement is about to come from an age point of view and a talent point of view, uh, but it feels like there's a lot of players on the verge. So let's talk about this team. Now, uh, as I explained in every video, I'll talk about what the colors and numbers mean. The, the colors is a little bit arbitrary, but uh, if they're green, I'm pretty confident they're gonna be in the 22 or 24. And if they're yellow, it's a little bit more of a question mark, which could be down to a few things, whether or not they're proven, uh, how much competition for their spot do they have. It's not as simple as I rate the players in green and I don't in yellow. It's gonna be inconsistent the way I do it sometimes, but I just do it as a bit of a visual aid. Um, and the numbers are simply, the first number is their age by round one of 2027. And the second number after the dash is how many games I estimate they probably would have played um, up until that point. And um, it's kind of based on a best case scenario. However, I've scaled it back a little bit for the possibility of injury and suspension. Uh, and if they're a fringe player, I don't give them that many more games, if that makes sense. So uh, with all that being said, let's talk about this team and let's go through it line by line. So the half back line, uh, you see a couple of yellows there, but the Full back line is all in green. So four out of the six there, I'm pretty damn confident will be there. Specifically, Jordan Ridley, um, you know, he's a bit of an understated gun of the comp. I've, I've shoved him back into a more of a third tall role, which I think is a bit more natural for him. And I'm assuming that Ben Mackay will still be uh, best 22 three years from now, which makes sense at 29, still in the prime of his career, really, for a tall like that. So the third spot I've given to Zach Reed, And I do think they need to, to sort of get a genuine key back in there to support Ridley and Mackay. I think uh, in my 2024 version, I think I had Laverde as a bit of a third tall. I'd rather see Ridley move to that role. And I think best case scenario, someone like a Zach Reed comes in and fulfills his potential. He's missed a lot of football through injury, but was a top 10 pick before. The players he beat out that are currently on the list, Lewis Hayes, he, he could beat him there, who knows. Uh, and I think Cade Baldwin as well plays a bit back. So Zach Reed, I think is the the 
a bit of a, a coin toss, but at the same time, I think he's the best prospect that they have. So hopefully he finds his way into the team. Mason Redmond and Andrew McGrath will almost certainly be there uh, based on quality. And then there's a halfback spot left open. Uh, this is replacing Dyson Heppel, who I had, I think, on their back flank in my 2024 version. But I've given it to another running defender, Luamon Luwal. It was out of him and Archie Roberts. And uh, Luamon Luwal went earlier in the draft. And I think, well, I don't really have a strong opinion on who's better. But uh, that was my logic for that. But I do think Luamon Luwal has has genuine AFL traits. So it's a, it's a good backline. It's a fairly settled backline. It's just the question mark of that, that key back spot to support what they already have. So the midfield, let's talk about the midfield. This is an interesting midfield. Um, now, I must admit, I've, I've kind of sidelined Parrish there. I put him on the bench. At 29, he could still be best there. But I, I think there is some genuine midfield talent about to come into this Essendon side and really flourish. So Ben Hobbs at 23 and Elijah Sardis, I think are two really, really high-level talents, particularly Sardis. I'm a, I'm a big fan. And I'll back him in to be a starting on-ball rotation alongside Hobbs, who I think has shown some really good signs. And Zach Merritt, I flirted with the idea of benching Merritt for the purposes of this, but at 31, I still think he's going to be you know, one of their best players. He's that good. The wings, Nick Martin is a lock, um, one of the better pure wing types of the of the competition. And at 25, you'd think he's only going to get better. Dersma, by by comparison, is a little less short. I mean, again, I don't know how much wing depth they have around behind Dersma to really push him out of this side. So you could probably put him in green. But again, he was in and out of the side at Port, so I'm not going to fully uh, back him in to absolutely be there in three years. But I think he'll certainly be on the list in three years. He's, he's too good for that. Uh, but either way, I think uh, has some nice traits as well and offsets what they already have in that midfield. Uh, so I've got Parrish on the bench. I've got Setterfield on the bench, another uh, player that I think was mentioned a lot in the comments of my last video from Essendon fans who really think this guy will make it. So uh, again, I, I, I've kept him on the bench purely because I just think Hobbs and Sardis are high-level talents, but I think Setterfield will be around the mark. Um, and at 29 years of age, uh, he's older than I thought he was. That is three years from now, I realize. Sam Durham as, a, as another wingman. Again, he could be there instead of Dersma. Maybe I could have flipped that around, but either way, they're still both in the mix. So it's a strong for, a strong midfield, rather. Um, obviously, there's a bit of an age gap between Merritt and Parrish, their current best midfielders, and uh, Hobbs and Sardis. And, and then you get the flankers I've got here are Perkins and Caldwell. Both of them could be genuine on-ball divisions. And Caldwell is another player that I thought was actually older than he is. In three years, he's only going to be 26. But because he's a bit of a forward as well, makes sense to put him on the flank and put on ballers in their actual positions as well. So if I could get some really dynamic rotations through Perkins and, and Caldwell, and I think the mix of this Essendon midfield is looking very strong in three years. Again, this is all predicated on potential. Not a lot of this has been truly demonstrated at AFL level yet, but we've seen good signs from them. So uh, to cover off the rest of the forward line, I've talked about the flanks. Uh, Caddy, I'm very confident, will be in this team. Um, I, uh, I'm a fan. And uh, I think he will probably be the natural successor to Jake Stringer. I think the Kyle Langford, the forward line transition has worked. And I'm back him in there. And Peter Wright at 30 as the second ruck and obviously a bit of a goal machine that he is. is He's still going to be in this team. So I like that mix. It's, it's good tall. So I'm really happy with that, that blend. You've got two good flankers there. The only one that's probably a little bit up for grabs still is Jai Menzi, um, who I mentioned is probably a little bit underrated in a previous video. Uh, but that being said, it's still speculative, and it's no guarantee he's going to be on the field starting uh, in that position in three years' time. His main competition is probably Alwyn Davy Jr., who I've got on the bench there. Um, and I think Jaden Davy is also a small forward too, if I remember correctly. So there's a little bit of competition there. Jai Menzi is probably the front runner with respect to that. And I also sidelined Gresham there. Maybe I put, put Gresham... Um, on the field instead of Menzi, but I see them as playing different roles. Gresham's a bit more of a higher player. Um, so, I don't know. He, he probably will be best 22, but there is some doubt at the end of the day, like Saints fans themselves, a lot of them weren't too sad to see the back of Gresham. So, hopefully, he, he established himself as a, as a gun at Essendon, but there's still some doubt there, right? Um, so, uh, other than that, you've got the Ruck, Sam Draper. Again, I, I missed him in the other video. I, I put him in there, but I forgot to mention him, but a very sound ruck prospect who um, is still approaching his prime as a ruck. So I don't really have any lack of confidence that he will be in this team. But while we're talking about other backups here, uh, oh, there's Nick Cox on the bench there, not as a ruckman, sorry. But again, I'm not really sure where he plays. He Is he an oversized wingman? Is he another key back option? But I think his versatility means he'll probably be in this team. He's had some injury issues, but I'd like to see him make it. So 
Uh, in terms of other players, Jaden Laverde, I just had missing this team in three years from now. Uh, Archie Roberts is probably next cap off the rank in terms of back flankers as well. If you don't go Laverde, you go Roberts. They're still around. The, the rucks in Brian and Vicentini at the moment, they're probably just going to be good backups to Draper and Wright. Um, you know, I, I don't know much about Vicentini, but Brian's played a bit at AFL level and he, he's good depth. And the, the other forwards that I just had missing this team were like Harry Jones. I, I just don't think he. I'm as confident about him as I am Nate Caddy. I think that makes sense. Sam Wiedemann, again, I don't have in this team. Jaden Hunter, um, who was a mid-season draft selection, if I'm not mistaken. Again, just don't really see it. And I, I also sidelined Guelphie. Um, and we're sorry, when I say I don't really see it, I just don't know enough, to be honest. And I think their current options are better. So I ramble about this team a lot. How good could it be? Well, I think... I think it could be really damn good, particularly that midfield. Um, I think the mix of Sardis and Hobbs, who are very different to each other, different again to Merritt. You've got Setterfield as that bigger body, uh, and then Parrish is that more like classic extractor type. They're all really offsetting each other. And then impact rotations from Perkins and Caldwell. I think there's high-end potential here. Having said that, though, it is at this point potential. Uh, none of these players are, are true A-graders yet, uh, with the exception of Merritt, obviously. I just meant the young ones. They, they, they've shown signs that they could be genuine A graders. So it's it remains to be seen to what extent Brad Scott can get this group to click because I think the, the potential is there. And I see this on talent as a team that could potentially contend in three years. It's probably the most talented Essendon side that I can remember projecting in three years' time. I think they've drafted really well. Um, what could they do from here? I don't know if there's too much... From a trade point of view, they need to do probably just keep replenishing through the draft. Obviously, they went trade heavy. They traded in four players this off season. Um, I would say probably just keep an eye on on drafting, but I don't see any clear positional needs unless they can't find a really reliable partner for Ben McKay in that back line. Then I probably need to recruit another one uh, because Zach Reed and Lewis Hayes are speculative types. But other than that, to be honest, that is a very solid team and very well rounded, and I see the potential with Essendon there. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. Again, I'm not I'm not going to make any claims that they're going to win a flag or be even top four in three years, but the, the list talent is there. So it's about nurturing it and preserving it as best as possible. So uh, that was a very glowing endorsement of what Essendon's building there. I think that was a, a common uh, or in common with what I said in their 2024 analysis video where it just feels like there's a lot of players with a lot of potential that could click. And when they do click, they could really, really be top end talents. We just haven't seen it yet. So I'm reluctant to make any big calls about them. However, from a talent point of view, like I've said, uh, I, I really see the potential with this group. So let me know in the comments what you agree with or disagree with. Um, SNN fans, what, uh, what do you think of, of the Zach Reed versus Lewis Hayes uh, situation there? Is there anyone in this team that you don't think will be in there and vice versa? Is there somebody that you think uh, should be in this best 24 that I've left out or potentially underrated? But as always, guys, I look forward to your input. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.